Right, it's going to be just a very quick video of um, using Realize in modern vehicles and with modern vehicles being cars or motorbikes why you put a real aid with a diode in built into it or why you should add a diode to it if you're using the old style. But realistically you can buy real aids now for a number of years with diodes inbuilt. You can also get them with uh, resistors inbuilt. There's uh, plus and minuses for both. But you need it for the voltage spike protection and if you use an old style relay without diode protection uh, you'll get large voltage spikes. So what we're going to do is hook this up to the car which is running just over 12 volts uh, just straight from the battery and we'll measure the size of the voltage spike that will come out of this relay when we disconnect it. And what happens is uh, within the relay it's electro um, mechanical so it creates an electromagnet which pulls down the, um, the switch which activates the relay and what happens is when you release the, um, the power from the electromagnet the coil collapses and the magnetic field collapses which then induces the current in the reverse direction and why they're dangerous to modern cars is the voltage spikes can do two things one that can go back into your, your computer or your ECU or whatever the controller unit if it's hooked up to that source and large voltage spikes will eventually if that's not the first time will eventually uh, blow up your transistor or MOSFET or whatever's driving the circuit. The second thing is is that you can have debounce, and I won't measure debounce on, on this relay, which then can create its own signal, which then can cause the computer to think that the debouncing signal is actually a computer signal, which can then ca cause erratic behaviour in your car. So we'll hook this up. Uh, we'll have it on the Pico scope. We'll be running uh, a trigger at 30 volts. So it's right that blue line at the moment, zero volts in there. I'll try and zoom in once I get a cap capture. That's our trigger set up at uh, 30 volts, but we'll see the spike will go above 30 volts. And we'll measure that in a second. Right, it's going to be just straight off. I've got it ready to go. So I'm just going to hook the negative to the negative side of the battery and the positive, and you should be able to hear the click of the relay, or maybe. Relays on, and there's our capture. Okay, so we'll go in and have a look at what the capture is. Well, we, from just from this point here, we see our volts rise from zero volt rises up to the 12 volts, which is battery voltage, and that's as the relays on. The yellow dot there is our trigger point. So here's our um, waveform zoomed in a bit. So we'll just bring the ruler down to start with down to there's our battery voltage there on that line there which is 12.94 volts and that's what it's running up until it hits the relay at this point when we when we turn off the relay we'll see that the coil starts collapsing and it'll create a DC voltage both in the positive and negative but what we're worried about is, is this large voltage here and as we zoom up to this top point up here we'll see that it uh, goes up to 151.5 volts so that's what injects back into uh, your driver or can come out of the coil at 151 volts. Now this second relay here, this is a Bosch relay. It's uh, obviously built, built straight for a vehicle. This has got an inbuilt diode into it, so we'll test this and we'll see how this one works. Okay, so we've got the scope running at the moment. Uh, we'll see that there's our trigger point still set up the same um, 30 volt for the trigger. We're now about to collect, uh, hook up the relay and we're now going to release the relay and as you see there was no voltage spike. Okay so I've just soldered on the bottom of this uh, relay a diode it's a 1N4001 so it's got a voltage of 60 volts as I say, it's 0.7 volts. Most diodes are 0.7 volts, 0.7.8 uh, forward voltage or to bias to turn them on and to allow the current to flow. And how you hook it up is, is this is the pin 86 on this side, which I've just marked as positive. And the diode is the cathode goes to the positive on 86. And this is why with modern di um, relays with diodes inbuilt, you've got to wire them up the correct way. Positive to 86 
and earth to 85. If you do it the other way, it won't work, it won't serve any purpose. The relay will work, but the tyre protection won't work. So we'll hook this back up to the scope, it's set up with all the same parameters. Okay, so we have to connect up the relay now. So, on. I'm going to release. And as you see, we're not getting any capture because the diode protection is doing its work. Right, so quickly, how do you know if your relay's got an inbuilt diode into it? Well, one is you can look up the, the model and the make and have a look at it. But two is, and it's going to be very hard because I've got to try and hold it here. On this side here is, you'll see, it's got a diagram with just a block on it, which comes off pins 85 and 86. Also, through the middle of pins 85 and 86 is the coil, and on this side is 87 and 30, or if you've got a dual pole, it'll be 87A, 87. And what you're looking for is this extra block on this side of it, on those pins, and that's your diode. So this is a diode relay. Now this one here is uh, not, and I'll see if I can get that to come up. And you'll just see there, uh, it is just the coil and then the switch. And there's um, nothing in there to, to show that there's any other terminal switch. So that's how you tell if you relay you've bought, if, if you haven't looked at the specifications, if it's got a diode in built into it. This is the one that we tested. Now the, the diode's now taken off it. Well, that's why you always got to connect the on the diode relays. You've always got to use your, your pins 85 and 86 correctly. So 86 is your positive. That's 86 is your positive, and 85 is your negative, and that puts your uh, diode in the correct um, uh, direction for filtering. Okay.